go over a couple of different diagrams. We got a Whirlpool stove, a microwave and a refrigerator. These are the machines that Vincent's gonna be working on for the competition. So I'm gonna go over some brief things to look at its operation and why are some of these things there. I start off with the, the oven section. So one thing nice about this diagram is a lot of times when you're looking at a stove, you have the four burners on the top, you have the clock and you have the oven and they usually make it in one whole diagram which makes it you know a little confusing the more stuff they add to a diagram and the more wires the harder it is wait till you see when we get the refrigerator diagram it's going to get that bad but what was nice about this i really liked about was that this part of the diagram here is just for the oven for the bottom half and the control board and this one here is for the four burners on the top what is this what is this box right here then the, the stuff inside that box the infinite switch so that's where you turn the dial to turn the burner on that's what these switches are doing up here um, what is this VT the VT is it violet the color of the wife yeah but this says p101 and p102 what what where have you seen like stuff that says p101 p102 it's probably a connection on the main control mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, you have a question? No, I was gonna guess I was on. Okay, so if we looked at the wiring diagram itself here. <coughs> um, come on. Where's my mouse? Because it's not opening. I'm tapping on it, and it won't open the other window. Great. Okay, so if we look here, see this VT101 and 102, mm -hmm. those are usually connections on the main control board. And you can see these P numbers here. Look at this cooktop feedback, 101 and 102. So we're gonna have to go back to the, the manual. Why does the main control board have a feedback from the elements? That's not normal on a stove. Is it like the surface one? elements would not turn the switch on trying to turn on this element. Let's do the circuit for the element first. So you turn on the element. This is Canadian models only, so don't worry about this. Power comes in, goes into line one, it goes through here, H1, and through here, and out. That's, that's the element. How many switches are in that circuit, or contacts in that circuit? For the element? Yes. One. One. Don't count two. this. Don't count that. <clears throat> two. Is there two? Yeah, two. And how would you test the top one? If you were to take a meter, how would you check that switch? One. From both sides of the, of the... Specific. If you were telling me over the phone, I need mm -hmm. you to check this switch, you'd have to tell me where to put the meter, right? Okay. H1 and H1. H1 and H1. L1 and H1, and that's how we check that okay, switch. Yeah. And the other switch is what? L, L, L1. L1 and, and H2. No, L2, L2 and, and H2. H2. Yeah. This says heater, that's not the heating element that you're cooking with. This is internal in the switch. And all infinite switches have this. It's a little wire wrapped around the switch. When the electrical current from the element is flowing through there, the heater gets warm and it cycles the switch open and closed. So if you put it on a low setting, we put very little pressure on that switch mm -hmm. and the heat here causes that to open. That's like a thermostat symbol. The thermostat is cycling on temperature, okay? If I put it on high, it pushes down on that and it don't let it open up. It stays closed the whole time, okay? So what happens is when we close that, this also closes every time we turn the burner on, but we got one terminal here, which is going back to the control board. So instead of having a little light on the console, the control board is telling you the burner's on. Now, I'm assuming because there's only one plug here for VT, and if you look, this VT is also connected there, but notice this VT. Where is it going? It's going down here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's look at the full diagram for a second. But you know, I cannot, I cannot touch the screen there. For some reason, it is not responding. Uh, I needed the full diagram, that would be here. So if we go down, 
we can see this L2 and this L2. I'm sorry, not L2. Uh, this VT and this here, they're going to P10 too. So this one and this one are separate from each other. The top one is for the left rear and the left front. The bottom one is for the right rear and the right front. I got you. And is so, it, so the, I haven't seen the control board, yeah. but I'm assuming on the control board will indicate which one, That's which right. side is on. Yeah, that was uh, but I don't think it has the, the ability to distinguish whether it's the front or the rear. It only says the left side or the right side. So let me just say, um, going back to my problem in my glasses. Going P, back to what? P, what is that? P, P say P, that what again? is that? The P, what is that? By this, B, by BT. What about BT? Oh, this right. is P10-1? BT is just probably violet wire. No, no, no. Those P10-1 and P10-2. P10-1 and P10-2. P10-1 and P10-2 are connecting over here on the oven control board. The control so these are, the, Steve, those are, those are the, um, regulating switches for the, for the temperature. Not regulating. The temperature regulation is done by this heater and this little thermostat inside of your switch. Mm -hmm. That's regulating the heat. These two wires are going to the control board and telling the control board, hey, I turned on that burn. Because on a regular stove, and if you want to, uh, let me bring up another diagram just to show you what they did different, because you guys are really not familiar with a regular diagram to see what is different. Um, so if we go here and let's bring up a regular so diagram and compare it. Uh, so they send information to the board. The, uh, instead of like, um, okay, so here's here's a, a freestanding Frigidaire range, and most manufacturers do it this way. So let's go to the diagram uh, here, and we're gonna rotate it. We'll rotate it three times. One. I'm using a free product, so it won't rotate because it's garbage. <laughs> so we have to open it with the, with a different program. So we open this with the full program. There we go. So now we can rotate it. I have to rotate it three times. So I'll pick up both times. Yeah, but at least I can rotate it. Yeah, you can rotate it with that one. So mm -hmm. in, in this diagram here, this is... The, the, the dual burner, mm -hmm. this is the single burner, and the, this is the surface limit switch. We don't have that on the other diagram, but if you see, let, let's say, look at that P right there. That P is going over to an indicator light right there, mm -hmm. okay? So we don't have, what? So you want to make it bigger? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to rotate it. So if on this stove, like a typical stove, L1 to P, which is what was on the other diagram, we'll go back there. L1 to P here goes right to a light. Now, if we go back to the other diagram, this diagram here, there's no lights. They're not showing any of the indicator lights. They remove the indicator lights from the machine and says, why add these extra lights? We can run these wires right to the main control board and tell the customer the, the burner's on by the control board and it costs us less money if we don't have to put these little lights on. Because every light we add, we got to add more wires, got the little sensor. We just run these wires right over to the control board. We can we can do that right from the control board instead of from from the from the uh, separate lights. Okay, so that's what V1 and VT, P10, one P10, two for VT is. Uh, <clears throat> this is what controls the temperature. Let's just start off here. If the burner doesn't work, what is the easiest and fastest way to troubleshoot our problem? To cut it off and see if it works. Okay, so you turn it, it on turn and the element don't work. Customer calls you out and says, Benny, uh, this burner in the front here, the right front's not working. Okay. So you turn the dial and it don't work. What, what are the easiest tests? How many tests can I do to tell what the problem is. Two. The minimum two. Yeah. Oh, very good with the two. That's the number I was thinking. Mm -hmm. But what are those two? One, tests? one on the infinity switch. 
which is power, which is voltage. Okay, and, if you say on the infinite switch, be specific. Where and oh, what? Oh, okay, okay. L1, H1, L2, H2. Okay, so you're going to check here and here. Mm -hmm. And you're going to check here and here to check these switches. Yes. Well, not that top one, but this one and this one. That's okay. What if both those switches are a good reading? Well, he's checking the switch, so I would mm -hmm. assume you're checking ohms for this oh, one, if, if, and you're checking ohms for that one to see if this switch is good and this switch is good. Mm -hmm. And your meter says it's good. So then you may have a, a problem with the board sending voltage to the to the to the. Well, well the board doesn't send voltage. The board is just lining up, taking okay. that burners off. Okay. Okay. So now what? We did two tests. Okay, the other one, the burner. We didn't check the burner. The burner's oh, good. Oh, we didn't check the burner element. Okay, so let's go here for a second. I thought we did check the burner element. <coughs> I know who you're checking it. You're checking the switch. So let's you take a look. electricity on the, the P10 to yeah. check it. Yeah. Like a voltage test on These P10. two tests don't tell me why the burner's not working. Right. All these are telling the board let someone turn this on, this switch oh, here. Oh, let someone turn it on? Yes, and the only way that board knows is through this contact, L1 to P. Does that contact have anything to do with that element? Nope. Does power need to go through that switch to feed that element? L1, H1. It comes in L1, so... but it goes this way to feed the element, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this here is not going to help us. It could come on and say someone turned a switch on, but it doesn't mean these contacts in the switch are working. It only means that one is working. Is that still useful information, though? Uh, the fact that it's the power part of it, there. But yeah, but, but we have two lines of power up. because we have L2 and L1. So we have two lines of power. Actually, I should have drawn it here. But we have L1 and L2. This, this is only using what? L1. It's not using L2. You need both of them to get the element? Huh? You need both of them? Yeah, watch. To get heat on the element? Yes, sir. This element is a 240 volt element, just like the dryer element. And it needs line two and line one to make that element work. The indicator light or this circuit here is only using what? Line one. Now, if all the other burners are working, mm -hmm. and just this one is not, you can't assume line one and line two to that switch is good, mm -hmm. because they're all jumping off of the same set of wires. It could be bad, but what I would do is, if I was testing it, and I wanna, I, I don't wanna be there long. Listen guys, when you're fixing appliances, two of the biggest time consumers are, one, diagnosing the problem, and two, the actual changing of the part. So, you know, some techs run eight, 10, 12, 14 calls a day. Well, the less time you spend in someone's home gives you more time to do another job, make more money. So you, when you diagnose, I tell people, if you're spending more than 10 or 15 minutes troubleshooting the problem, you spend way too much time. So one of the tests we can make is H1 and H2. I can do a voltage test. That's the element. If I have 240 there and my element don't work, what do I do now? Replace the element. Replace the element. What? Replace, Replace the element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could a wire be broken? Can Could it? be. Yes. So we make our second test. Mm -hmm. With the same two terminals, we turn off the power, unplug the machine, mm -hmm. and we do an ohms test. When I'm doing a, remember, what did I say about a voltage test different from an ohms test? What did I say? What are the different? When you're testing voltage, you're testing what? You're testing the line, the, um, the power. <clears throat> it starts with a C. Circuit. The circuit, yeah, yeah. If I put my meter here and I'm checking power, I'm checking to see if electricity came here mm -hmm. and electricity came mm -hmm. here.
So when I'm doing a voltage test, I'm checking power coming to that. And if I have power, that means my switches are good and power in the machine's good. Okay? And the only thing left really is my heater. But it could be a broken wire, right? Yeah. So then I unplug it and do the same test, but for ohms or resistance. Now when I switch it from voltage to ohms, I'm testing the circuit like that. Mm -hmm. the heater. So I can check the heater out. So for two tests, I can pretty much eliminate it. The circuit and uh, the elements. So, yeah, so, the so if you, I'm if sorry. You, if, if you're gonna do the voltage test, right? So that means if it comes out and it reads 240, that means that the uh, circuit is good. That's the issue. The circuit up to that point. So I mean the wires in it. So that means it's not a wiring issue. Well, not, I haven't tested these wires. Mm -hmm. I'm recording. Okay, you, everything you guys say is being put on there and I'm put you all on blast. So here and here, when I'm testing this, I'm testing from here back to the plug. Yeah. When I'm doing the ohms test, I'm checking here, here, I'm checking in between the two terminals, which is the wire. Now what is this symbol where you see it all over the diagram? Plug. What is that? The connector. A quick disconnect where you have two plastic plugs that plug mm -hmm. together so from the top of the stove to the burners underneath there may be a, a plug yeah. to the factory it's easier for them to wire the top separately wire the switches separately and then when they put the top with the stove they just plug it in with one quick plug and all these wires are on that one plug you could have a bad connector on the plug right yes mm -hmm. all right so that is that I would just check voltage here and then go to ohms and check that. I'm done. Okay. What well, in this case here, it is possible one of the two burners is not working, the other one is. If one is working and the other one is not, watch this. Hmm. Let's just say the inner is working, but the outer is not working, right? If the inner element is working, now pay attention here, the inner element is working. What information can you get from that? What 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 is that telling you? That you have power. We have, we power, have power to, to the, the burner, right? To the, burner. To the switch. Yeah. Okay, so when you're troubleshooting this, first we're gonna identify that inner burner that's working. Line one come in, and the inner burner's down here, so I'm gonna come down here to the inner burner. And I'm going to come out and do this. And if that inner burner is working, everything I just drew a red line through is good. Is good. Because there's no way this element will work if that switch is bad, this switch is bad, that little heater is bad. Yeah. If any one is bad, that inner one's not going to work either. Mm -hmm. Just by turning it on, just by turning it on, I can check this inner element. Okay, so now the problem is the outer is not working. Mm -hmm. How many tests do I need to make to check this? Two. One, two. two tests. Wait, hey, two tests, two tests. Mm -hmm. And what are those two tests? Um, the, switch, the infinite switch and the uh, element. Okay, the infinite switch, how would we check it? From where to where? From H2, H1. H1. B, yeah. From H where? H2, H1. H2, H1? No, H, no H2, H, H1, H1, B, H2, A. No. L1. Well, you could do that, but first I'm going to check that switch. Yeah, okay. okay, L1 to, L1 to, H1, H1, to H1, 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 B. And now I'm checking that switch, right? Mm -hmm. How am I testing that? The voltage. Ohms. Oh. Ohms. Ohms. Okay. Now, if I want, I could do a voltage test. I could put a voltmeter here. And, and the other side of the element is here, right? H2. Mm -hmm. okay. And I can look for 240. If I have 240 here, and that's not working, mm -hmm. what do I do? Change the element. Change the element. If I don't have 240, change the switch. Yeah. One test. Mm -hmm. And I can say it's a switch or the element, I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you repeat it? Okay. Just say it exactly the same, okay? Okay. First, we notice the inner element's working. 
I drew a line showing how that element is getting electricity and power. And in that case, everything I just drew a red line through is good. Okay? So now my element, this element's not working. So a simple voltage test from here to here, which is really checking that, right? If I have 240 here, that means what? This switch is sending power. We already know this switch is good because this element's working. So it's not that switch. The only thing that would stop this would be that switch. But if I have 240 here, what does that mean? This switch is what? Uh, Open or closed? Closed. This switch is closed. There's no way I'm gonna have 240 here if I do that. Yeah, you should get a zero test because it's all on the same line. If yes. it's open, I mean, if it's closed. Well, here's the problem. You should get zero if they're both on the same, yeah. 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 If that element is broke, this won't get nothing. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah, and you'll get like a one. If I turn on the switch, I have 240. Yeah. Now, if I have 240 here, do I really need to ohm out the <laughs> element? No. Because... If we look at it, going back to where we were, this circuit is good. The only possible problems are these two items. And if they don't work, and I have power here and here, that means the switch is trying to turn it on. It's right. still not coming on. Right. It's bad. Right. Right. If I don't have power here, but this element's working, that switch is bad. I'm done. I'm not even going to ohm it out. Right. You already ruled. You already ruled out. So, you know, the judge might ask you, well, did you check that switch? No, I didn't check that switch. Mm -hmm. Well, why, why didn't you check it to prove it? Because, well, I saw that this worked, so I knew line one was bringing power in. Mm -hmm. I knew power was here. Mm -hmm. I checked power here and here. I didn't have power. Well, that switch has to close to give me power here. So that switch is bad. Mm -hmm. But if I do have power, and it still don't work. Well, the only thing left is the element. Mm. Did I? Did you want about the element? No, but that's the only thing left is the element. Mm. I don't need to test it. Mm. So what is troubleshooting? What is like the actual troubleshooting? What are you doing? You're comparing um, a normally present condition to what the current condition is. Yeah, in, in a more simplified term, just like a detective. You're little by little ruling out the possibilities to you narrow it down to only one or two possible things that are wrong before I even put a meter on it. Yeah. The very first test was that this element came on. That element is the same thing as my meter. If my meter gives me a voltage reading, it's the same thing as that element turning on. So I don't need to put a meter at that point. Right. That element starts to get red hot. I got power. So it's either one of these. I check power right there. If I have power, element's bad. If I don't have power, switch is bad. I'm done. One test. Simple, huh? Mm -hmm. But you need to know how to read the diagram. Mm -hmm. Now the other two burners down below are the same as these two. Right. What if the complaint is, I put it on high, it's red hot. Let's start with the top one. I put this one on, it's red hot. But I was boiling one, I turned it down to three. Because I don't want to boil it. But stay red hot. You finish the switch. You finish the switch. The only thing that controls yeah. it is this part of the infinite switch. If it stays red hot, it that's goes. your problem. Yeah. Change the switch. You don't even need to put a meter on. Because each switch has got like a little thermostat inside, uh -huh. right. which controls that element working. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to the oven. Oh, this is the fridge that I want. This is the one I want. I want this one. I forgot I can't touch the screen. The mouse will work on my finger. Here. Okay, so let's look at this oven circuit. I'm going to bring this one into the other program. So hard, so hard to do this from, from the distance.
not going to be able to go through all these machines tonight, I know for a fact. We're going to have to start lecture early tomorrow to go over as much as we can. Okay. And then we have Monday too. Okay. So let's look at this oven circuit here. Now there was some information I did not copy that was right in this right hand corner. I want you guys to see that. Oh, not that one. Here. What does it say there? Schematic shows oven door open and elements off. Okay, so <clears throat> the way they drew it, make sure you read everything on the wiring diagram because sometimes notes tell you they drew it this way. Like on some washing machines, they'll say, oh, washing machine is in the spin cycle with no water in the tub. Or the machine's full of water and it's agitating. So they drew the switches where the machine's full of water and agitating, or it's spinning. So you have to know those are the positions of the switches. Like they're telling you here, shows the oven door is open. How often are you gonna go walk up to someone's house and the oven door's open? <laughs> Not much. But they showed that the oven door's open, and when the oven door's open, what happens? The door switch is open. Mm -hmm. So they drew that switch in the open position. When is that switch gonna close? When you close the door. When you close the door. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the circuit for the bake element. Come on, Vince. You're gonna do the circuit for the bake element up here. Oh, you wanna come up there? Yeah, sure. You need to practice uh. these diagrams. I'm sorry there, sir. I know. You heard him grunting because <laughs> at his age, it's hard to get him out of a chair. <laughs> I know that. All right, right, so what I want you to do is we got line one, line two, and neutral. Mm -hmm. When I start at line one, I want to energize the bake element. You want to energize the bake element? Yeah, so show me the circuit for the bake element to get power. Now, if you don't know how to get to it, start at the bake element and follow it back to the plug. Okay. So sometimes you're looking at diagrams and you're trying to, okay, where do I go left, right? To the board? I want it here. I want to end up here. You want to end up here? Yes, sir. So okay. energize the bake element. Where's the bake element? The bake element is right here. Okay. I'll start on these two dots, mm -hmm. follow back to that plug. Follow well, back to that plug will be for me. Okay. Now do the other side. Do the other side going to the board? Yeah, complete the whole circuit. That's not complete, is it? Keep going. Follow that line. Keep going. Keep going and out. No? Oh. Back to the plug. Back to the oh. plug. Oh. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right. All right. Watch your step there. Okay. Have a seat. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, bake element don't work. <clears throat> Gus calls you out and says, hey, I'm trying to bake some cake for my kid's birthday party and the oven wasn't working. So you turn it on and see the bake oven's not getting hot. What do we do? Where do we begin testing? Power. Voltage. Power. power. And the wall, is you going to pull the stove out and check the power in the wall? Yeah. Why? We'll check the power at the terminal power. block. No, let me ask you a question. On the... We were just talking about what before the oven? The, um, the, 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 uh, the, burners, the, stove, right? the stove time. Yeah. And didn't I say if the burner comes on red hot, it's the same as your meter telling you got yeah, power? Right, 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 right. So my oven don't work. I'm gonna turn on one of the top burners. It gets red hot, what does that mean? I mean, you got power. I got power, right? Mm -hmm. So do I need to pull the stove out, check mm -hmm. power in the wall? Mm -hmm. No. But checking power normally is good. If it's totally dead, that might be one you wanna do. Okay? So we turned on the top of the stove, it got red hot. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? Check the element. Check the element? The, yeah, the thermostat. Why? This is a computer board. Oh, it's a computer board? Control board. That's the oven sensor. This is the board. This is relays on the board that turn on that oven. Mm -hmm. the door switch. The door switch? Check the bake oven. Look at that blue line. Do I have Do I have the, uh, the blue line going through the door switch? No. no, no, no. If you're cooking at home and you open up the oven, does the oven the, shut off? No, definitely not. What's the door switch for? It's it's for when you wanna um, 
do um, self cleaning or something like that. P four three and P four. Uh, does this four. oven self clean? Mm -mm. The motor no. it has a locking motor, so it cleans. Yeah. If it locks the door, we only lock yeah. the door for self clean. Oh yeah. That's right. But let's go back to what we're saying. Okay. <clears throat> The door switch won't let the lock motor lock unless the control board can see that that switch is closed. Okay? The motor switch is once the motor's locked, tell the control board, okay, I successfully locked the door, now we can clean. But that has nothing to do with our baking problem. Right. So you turn it on, you see the bake don't work, you turn on the top burner, it gets red hot. Mm -hmm. Now what do you do? Turn on the bottom of the bake element and see if it comes on. But it don't. We yeah. already tried that. Um, I guess you, you go to the board and check P43 and P44. Why? Because you want to see if if you have any um resistance within that line. Not yet. Not P4, yet? P4, P4, We're one. not going to take one screw out Okay. okay. or take our meter out yet. Yeah. Remember I said with the dual burner. If one of the two elements on the dual burner work, I think it was this diagram here. I said on this dual burner, if I can say this one is working here, what does that line mean? What does that line mean to me? That you have power all the way through that line. Power flowing through, through and what? The switches are good, right? Mm -hmm. The only things that I didn't draw a line through, I don't know if they're good or not without testing with the meter. Right. Oh. Let's use that same thought process with the oven. Mm -hmm. Bake element. How do we use that same thought process with the oven as we did with the dual burner on the top of the stove? Because you, if you have power at your broiler, at your broiler. If I, so now what I want to do is I want to see my broil circuit. I'm going to put the oven on broil. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the broil gets red hot. Right. So let's take a look at the broil circuit. Mm -hmm. Here's the broil that right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come in line one. Well, no, that's no good, right? Mm -mm. No. I'm going to come in line one, and I'm going to mm -hmm. go here, mm -hmm. and go here, and out. So me. That is the circuit for the broil element. Yes, sir. Okay, you say you have the, I'm seeing like there's multiple heating elements inside this oven. Yes, we have a bake and a broil. The bake is on the bottom and the broil is on the top. So when you're cooking fish and steak, you broil them. When you're making a cake and brownies, you're baking them. Okay, so the ovens have two elements in them. Okay, but the yellow line indicates a circuit that is working okay. Okay. the blue line by itself is showing me a problem mm -hmm. so watch this i'm going to erase the yellow line mm -hmm. cuz anything in this yellow line is working right mm -hmm. so i erase the yellow line How many parts can possibly be bad that are left in the blue line? The element. Just the element. <coughs> the element and? Oh, the switch. The, uh, and the, the, bake, the bake relay. The bake relay, yeah, I can't see it. Hmm. But yeah. So what do we do now? How do we test? How many tests and what do we test? Can you check K3 and L1? Is K, that's K3? Uh, check where? what? What number is that? K? Can you zoom the... Those are P's, but I'll clear it for you. Let me clear this and then it, it's it's zoom in. Dead. You want me to zoom it in? I can make it bigger. Yes, please. There you go. How's that? Mm -hmm. So, going back to that circuit, we had it going from line one to here. It was not working. But I think I erased this because the broil used it up to this point right here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we identified two parts that could possibly be bad. The bake element or that relay. L1 and P43. L1 and P43. L1? Mm -hmm. That's okay. And what are you checking? Voltage oh. or ohms? Voltage. That's not a good test because... 
this one and this one are both line one. Okay. But if I put a meter here, here, and I put a meter here and check for voltage, and I have 240 volts, watch. If I have 240, I'm going to use a different color again. I'm going to go ahead and use, uh, I'll use pink. In order for me to have 240, I have to have power here, and I have to have power to here. If I have 240 there, what's my problem? The actual... The only thing left is bacon. Right. Because having 240 here means what? Your bank, the your relays are working. Is good. If I don't have 240, then you know it's the relay is bad. Which relay? The, the bacon relay, K3. K3. Yes. Now, if what's DLB stand for? A double line breakthrough. Or don't look back. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, double line break. Break. Okay. Back in the day when they first started coming out with electronic oven controls, we're talking about the early 90s, mm -hmm. okay? They had two relays. They had a bake relay and a broil relay. Mm -hmm. You want the bake on the command, you close the broil re bake relay, it works. You want the broil on the command, you close the broil relay. Years later, people would take the bake element out mm -hmm. to change it. 